do a great job by our graphics team as always. I love seeing them get love themselves in the comments because they deserve it because they do such a bang up job. Also, T. Candelora is new. Welcome, asking what this is. This is a live version. If you play Daily Trivia Challenge every day, this is the live version. Now, this is a live game with questions you have never seen before. Uh, same to you. Swagmam is new and just logged on. You logged on for the Daily Trivia Challenge and didn't even know what this was. Yet you're getting like an extra bonus game. So if you play Daily Trivia Challenge twice a game, uh, twice a day rather, you get to play this live version of the game right now, and you could win a whole lot more. Uh, than what you even win in the Daily Trivia Challenge. This is like another extra bonus for you that you can add on top. Maybe you'll become a regular player. I sure hope so. We asked in the push notification, what are your Halloween plans? And Pixie Dust 319 is a great one. Staying in and watching scary movies. Is there any better time for scary movies than Halloween? I don't think so. Lightning Trust is dressing up for the day, but then they said their plans is just go. They're only going to go out if they have to. But they're going to get dressed up, so you're in the spirit of Halloween, even if you're not going out and doing a bunch of stuff. Love that, too. Clever is taking their kids trick-or-treating. Lovely. Irish is watching a Halloween marathon. I assume that's a marathon of all the Halloween films and not just a marathon of films about Halloween. Or a bunch of people dressed like Mike Myers running 26 uh, .1 miles. Owls hopes to see or hear Hubert. Well... You might have seen something flash across your screen earlier that's a hint that you will see here, but the Halloween Spectacular will be back. Our trusty is going to be watching. It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown, another classic, and Alicia Lee Ray is celebrating her birthday and taking her little girl trick-or-treating. Happy early birthday to you, Alicia Lee Ray. But for now, it's National Chocolate Day, and how sweet it is to have you here playing the Monday edition of Daily Trivia Live. That's the mobile game show where you win money from the comfort of your phone. Chow down on random knowledge bits dipped in your memories as you go after today's grand prize. That is $1,000. And when you correctly answer 10 multiple choice general trivia questions, you will win your share of it. In this game, you'll earn one bonus SB for every question you get right after question number one, even if you've already been eliminated. If you win the game, they're automatically added to your share of the grand prize. So you get your share of the $1,000. Then all the bonus SB you earn along the way, those get added on top automatically. If you don't win the grand prize, you can still rack up those bonus SB. However, you will have to claim them at the end of the game in order to keep them. How do you claim them? Number one, you don't leave early. Number two, at the end of the game, a button appears, says claim your SB. You will claim them, and then they'll be yours. It's as simple as that. So you stick around no matter what. Don't leave early. Also, the first time you get a question wrong, as long as it's before question number 10, you can rejoin to get another shot at the grand prize. You can do that either using SB or with a free rejoin. And if you don't have any of those, if you somehow missed out on second chance week last week where we give away a bunch of free rejoins, you can click the plus sign in the top left-hand corner of the main menu anytime a game's not happening and get free rejoins by watching videos. Finally, each game, we give away five 100 SB prizes to five players who win and claim at least one SB in the game. Here are the winners from this past Thursday. All of you have been credited. Congratulations on the 100 SB. I hope that got you over the top for the next gift card you're going to get. To everyone else, you know what I'm going to say, so say it along with me. Keep playing and claiming because next time, the winner could be you. All right, the talky-talky part is over, and the gamey-gamey part is ready to begin. Here is question number one. Which of the following celebrities is famous for being a supermodel? Is it Angelina Jolie, Cindy Crawford, or Liza Minnelli? Which of those three ladies is known for being a supermodel? They're a model. Even today at 58 years old, she remains one of the most beautiful women in the world. And maybe it's her signature beauty mark that makes Cindy Crawford stand out. Who knows? She got a daughter that looks just like her, too. That's crazy, like a twin, because she hasn't aged somehow. 93% of you knew Cindy Crawford was the answer. Angelina Jolie did work as a model for a while, but she's known uh, as, an, as an actor and, and a director, a filmmaker, producer, a multi-hyphenate. Cindy Crawford, also very successful in business and super smart. If you saw the fun fact today, she had a chemical engineering uh, she could she could have studied chemical engineering at Northwestern. She had a scholarship to do so. Only did it for a quarter. Found a different career. Let's move on to question number two. Worth one bonus SB. If you get it right, here it is. Q2. Which of these snacks is traditionally made around a campfire? 
Is it an ice cream sandwich, fiddle faddle, or s'mores? Almost 16,000 people are in grand prize contention right now. Fiddle faddle will become a stickier mess, and an ice cream sandwich will turn into two soggy cookies over an open flame. But those s'mores get toasted to perfection. You get the marshmallow, you get the chocolate all melty. You know, you do the marshmallow over the fire, don't do the rest of it there. Anyway, s'mores is the answer. Pretty much everybody getting that one right. Well done. That is what we like to see. We are cooking with gas as we move to question number three, worth one bonus SB if you get it right. What imaginary line is located at zero degrees latitude? Is it the equator, an imaginal line, or the dotted line? An imaginary line located at zero degrees latitude. Yes, it's imaginary, but we use it to separate the northern hemisphere from the southern hemisphere. The concept of an equator is something that we can and have applied to a number of planets. Everybody's got an equator. That's right, the equator is the answer. 98% of you getting that one right. Uh, the Maginot Line is something that did not work well as a military strategy. Uh, look it up in the history books. Just didn't, uh, didn't work out so well for France. All right, we are moving on. Of the 2% of you eliminated, by the way, everybody just rejoined. Love seeing that. Pretty much all of you did it for free. We're on to question number four now, worth one bonus SP if you get it right. Amenhotep ruled over what country? Was it Iraq, Russia, or Egypt? Amenhotep. What country could Amenhotep have ruled over? Like many rulers from BCE, he didn't live the longest life. He died around the age of 50 after spending over 30 of those years as the ruler of Egypt. He was the pharaoh. Yes, Egypt is the answer. 88% of you getting that one right. Well done. But we did. This is the, this is the toughest one we've had so far. 12% of you getting eliminated from grand prize contention. Now you can either rejoin, which most of you have done, or you can stick around and bo earn bonus SB. Those are the only two good choices as far as I'm concerned. Here we go. Question number five on the way worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Which of the following is a common programming language? Is it Java, Java, or Javelin? Which of those is a common programming language? Java, Java, or Javelin? It debuted to the world on May 23rd, 1995, and as recently as two years ago, it was among the most popular programming languages on the planet, although recently there has been a decline in the usage of Java. That's right, Java is the answer. 96% of you getting that one right. You know that little loading screen you have like a Java player where you have the little coffee with the steam coming out of it? Because, you know, Java's coffee. We all get it. Anyway, we are moving on to question number six. Let's see if you can get this one worth one bonus SP if you get it right. Which book of the Old Testament contains the story of Adam and Eve? Is it Leviticus, Judges, or Genesis? People asking for Bible trivia, this is your chance to show off some of that knowledge. The book starts out with nothing and ends with Israel and Egypt, a cliffhanger that Exodus uses to build on the foundation established by Genesis. Genesis is the answer. 91% of you getting that one right. Genesis is the creation of, of the world, and that includes Adam and Eve, the first man and woman to appear in the Bible. You got the serpent in there. There's a whole lot going on. Garden of Eden, you know. That's just Genesis for you. Of the 9% of you that got eliminated, 8% saying Leviticus, we got most of you right back in, just around three quarters of you. Still over 14,700 people in grand prize contention. Only four questions left to go. Next one worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here's question number seven. The phrase back to square one is rumored to have originated with a version of what board game? Is it Candyland, Shoots and Ladders, or Clue? Back to square one. What board game could it be? The whole object of the game is to make it to the end of the board, and the pitfalls you encounter along the way can send you back to literal square one. So think of shoots and ladders next time you think of that phrase. Shoots and ladders is the answer. 63% of you getting that one right. But oh my goodness, this is the toughest question that we have had so far. 29% of you saying Candyland, 7% saying Clue. And unfortunately, although you could use those phrases while playing those games, there's no rumor, not a, not a very well-known rumor, that, uh, that it comes from either of those games. But it, they do say it came from Snakes and Ladders, which is, of course, the early version of Shoots and Ladders. Uh, there are all sorts of rumors about it. We don't know for sure where it came from, but 
Most of you are not back to square one because most of you were able to rejoin. We are moving on to question number eight now. Worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here it is. Which of the following is not a traditional answer that a magic eight ball gives you? Is it yes, ask again later, or I don't have time for this? Which of the following is not a traditional answer that a magic eight ball gives you? The magic eight ball is there to peer into your future, nay, your very soul, and answer any question you can think of to ask it. So that means it'll never tell you that it doesn't have time for you, okay? It won't do that. 98% of you getting that one right. You know the magic eight ball is there to be your friend and soothsayer. So why don't we just move on to question number nine. It is worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here it is. Which of the following hard drive sizes can hold the most data? Is it 500 megabytes, 500 gigabytes, or 500 terabytes? Which of those is the biggest hard drive? Another way of saying it, but you get it. If you're old enough, you remember when 500 megabytes was the largest hard drive you could buy. That wouldn't even take up 1% of the space on a 500 terabyte hard drive. 500 terabytes is the answer. 11,862 of you knew that one. You made it this far and you are ready for our final question. But first, you know, we talked about Halloween earlier, and I'm going to mention it now, just so you know. That's right. Hubert is going to be here to host his annual Halloween spectacular. That will be on Halloween itself at 5 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Eastern time. For those of you who don't know, Hubert, who's that skull, is looking out of the window at the top. He is the ghost of trivia past. He was an on-camera character when we were doing on camera, and he still haunts the game. Uh, and lives with me, which is uh, really weird for me and my wife. But we let him host the game a couple times a year, and this is the big one for him. So join us. It's going to be a great time. Also, just in case you didn't know, there are two ways to get SB from Swagbucks Daily Trivia, this entire app, outside of our live games. One of them is the Daily Trivia Challenge, which some of you said you came here to play. That's a quick, hostless version of our game that you can play on your schedule up to twice per day, except when we have these live games, which is four days a week. But second is by clicking the More Ways to Earn button, wherever you find it in the app. That is how you get to the Tap Joy wall. The Tap Joy wall has quick, easy to complete offers. You can check Daily Discover off of your to-do list in minutes. You can rack up the SB faster than you'd imagine, and you're gonna have a good time while doing it. It's helpful for things like Swago. If you haven't submitted your board yet today, don't forget to do that. And of course, it's good for team challenges and just generally for having more SB in your account. And both of the ways that I mentioned will get you SB towards your daily goal. Here's another way you can earn SB. Give your laundry snuggle softness and freshness that the whole family will love. Long lasting scents, snuggly softness, reduces wrinkles. That's snuggle. Add snuggle to your list of magic receipts, then buy a 111 ounce to 145 ounce container of snuggle fabric softener in store at Walmart and get 200 SB when you upload a photo of your receipt as proof of purchase afterwards. If you buy two or more on the same receipt, you get 500 SB. Stock up on that fabric softener. I know we use a ton of laundry products here and you go through them so fast. So pick up two, get more SB, check it out after the game. We'll have a little box that'll let you go right to it and get started. If, of course, you are a U.S. player, this is for you. All right, we have 12,253 people who are still vying for a piece of this $1,000 grand prize. Over 16,700 of you have stuck around to the end, and I got one more bonus SB if you can correctly answer question number 10. Here it is. Tony Hawk is famous for his contributions to what sport? Is it pickleball, skateboarding, or track and field? What could it be? I guess we're going to find out. If you're out with friends and a car pulls up with Tony Hawk sticking his head out the window and asking you to do a kickflip, you might be getting a new skateboard from him because he's a skateboarding legend. Skateboarding is the answer. 11,859 of you knew that answer. You are splitting our grand prize today. Just crushing the game. Well done to you. Let's meet some of these grand prize winners. Each of you taking home 9 SB in grand prize money, plus all those bonuses you earned along the way. Choo choo, you are a winner. Hockey man, you won. Chrissy Lynn 371, take your place in the winner's circle. And why don't you bring Thomas C. Isaac, Thomas C. Isaac with you? Just a few of our grand prize winners. Congratulations to all of you, and congratulations to those of you who earned bonus SB and claim them. 
Now that you have all these new SB in your account, you know what to do with them, of course. Redeem them for PayPal cash or gift cards to Amazon, Starbucks, Target, and hundreds of other places. Great job today. See you tomorrow for our Tuesday game. Thank you for playing Daily Trivia Live, and we will see you then, my friends.